Dune is unlike anything else that's out there. It is pure cinema. Dune was the most ambitious movie I had ever done. It's a whole new universe. And there were numerous big scale scenes and I wanted to shoot as much as possible on camera. When your director wants to keep it as grounded and practical as possible, that's a gift because it feels like you're able to feed off your environment, bring the scene to life. Duncan! I think people are going to be blown away. Benny and I start with the illustration book so everybody knows what type of movie they're working on. Patrice's artwork was incredibly influential. It has a size and the scale that we were after. So we built sets to the edges of the stages. I just couldn't believe how massive they were. I walked onto the stages, my jaw dropped. Action! The sets are exquisite. And we had scenes out in the desert that Denis and I wanted this place to feel like you're opening the world up. Because there is this amazing, crazy landscape that you will never believe that they are real. Dune is a movie about nature and it was very important for me to be as close as possible. He knows exactly what he wants. He's loved his book since he was 14. He's had this movie in his mind his whole life. So there is an aesthetic to this film that's just different. Dune, for me, is a love letter to the big screen. And that's the way it was dreamed, that's the way it was designed, that's the way it was achieved. And that's the way I hope people will experience it. I must not fear, for the fear is gone. Only I will remain. has a grasp on character-driven narratives, small in scope or large in scope. Thanks to Frank Herbert, here's a story that's on that scale, but with characters and relationships and stories. You know, and if these were the things that made me want to act. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. Dune is the story of the Atreides family that falls into the trap set by the Emperor, who is getting more and more jealous of their growing popularity. House of Trades stands as a beacon where every other house in that galaxy is in reference to that, either as enemies or as friends. He wants to not only make sure that his people survive, but that his son is the kind of leader that he thinks he should be. Paul Atreides is the son of Duke Leto and Lady Jessica. And my initial conversation with Denis was simply begging him to, you know, be able to take part in the film. The great houses look to us for leadership and this threatens the Emperor. Gurney Halleck and Duncan Idaho did feel like big brothers. You know, they rip him, especially Jason. He's the protector of the Atreides. I mean, he's definitely the head knight who watches over the family. Zarkar! I mean, that's his sworn duty. I mean, that's what any honorable knight soldier does. No! Duncan! I mean, that's his family. That's who he bleeds for. Gurney Halleck is a combat trainer, and he's a warrior. Oh, man. I fight! He's a very strict, but fun, visceral, Paternal, maternal, he's all of those things to Paul. Paul Atreides, you are your father's son. You are my son. Lady Jessica is part of the Order of the Bene Gesserit. This order that she's a part of, we can say, make her perhaps the non-traditional partner to Duke Leto. This group of women who carries enormous strength and power. They are bodyguards, they are fighters, they can read people. And this is what Jessica is having to deal with being a mother, a lover, and this Bene Gesserit. How can the Emperor take everything we've built and give it to that Duke? Where is a gift, not a gift? 
Every uh, movie needs its, its uh, bad guys, and the Harkonnens are the old ancestral enemies of the Atreides. The Harkonnen have been a very dark, sadistic family in this galaxy. Frank Herbert created a very powerful character into Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. He just shows up, and then his shadow looms throughout the film. He's a cause of many people's death. He feeds off of fear. He feeds off of pain. He's a vicious, sadistic person. No squeeze, rapper. Squeeze hard. Yes, Uncle. And the Fremen. Kill them all. The Fremen are native tribes. <laughs> People living in a deep desert. They had the capacity to adapt to the toughest environment. Deep heat, massive sandstorm, dangerous predators all around. <laughs> Stilgar is, is the leader of the Fremen. He is a powerful character. In, he's a warrior but also he's a warrior. He, he worries about the future. Take good care of your family. Dr. Kynes. And the surface was seemingly just somebody who's an ecologist, someone who cares about the Fremen. But then you start to understand how much pressure she is actually under. Paul is dreaming about this strange young woman that uh, keeps talking to him in his dream. She feels like an old friend again and, and someone that like uh, wants to guide him. Follow the friend. Johnny is native to Arrakis. She's used to this hostility between her people and the people that are trying to take from her land. She's a fighter at the end of the day. House Atreides and the Harkonnen have an ancient grudge and the forces that they're up against are much greater than he had anticipated. They're on a path of conflict, and it's the uh, moral catalyst to Paul's arc towards something greater. My friends, if you look at the very first mountain there... Denis Villeneuve is simply an incredible director. His passion for the material, first and foremost, the earmarked copy of Dune on set that was battered and beaten and bruised with his passion. I discovered uh, the book in my youth, in my teenage years. I remember being fascinated by its poetry, by what it was saying about nature. It's very powerful and complex story. Still, we try to approach it from a simple angle. I dream about Dune for a very long time. But at the end of the day, what will move the audience will be the performance of the actors. He knows exactly what he wants. He's loved this book since he was 14. He's had this movie in his mind. This was one of his dream movies. I asked him once if what he is making now looks like what he had imagined, and he said yes. There's something quite vulnerable and, and incredible when it comes to Denny's films and characters. What Denny's done, it's so dreamlike. It feels like this phantasmagoric fever dream. Action! Go, 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 go. He's a nice, warming caring, funny, intelligent person that remind them then the joy of why we do what we do, which is to imagine and to create something that doesn't exist. He is a director who really understands how to create the most creative set, the ambiance for people to be at their best. To see him with the others just having a good old laugh between shots and takes, it just makes it feel like family working with him. I found Denis to be one of the best collaborators I've ever worked with because we immediately started talking about the scenes and talking about the book. He was always incredibly open to a lot of these things and open to exploring it further. Denny is so thoughtful with everything that he does. I don't think there's any part of anything that he hasn't thought through like a million times. For me, cinema is an art form, so I want the audience to be blown away. I want them to be uh, excited, but what they will take out of it, that belongs to the audience. <laughs> this is only the beginning. For me, I love makeup when I don't see it. I started to work with Donald Moat. I was very impressed by his sensibility. Donald is all there for the characters. He's very subtle, very precise. Come on, old man. I think one of the most interesting things working with Denis is you kind of come to the table with sort of an open slate. You start with certain references and I'll bring him pictures and we sort of compare notes. So we talked about some of the things that really stood out. Obviously the Baron, certainly anything to do with the main cast. We really covered each character. 
Certainly with Josh's scarf, it started off from less is more, but sometimes the simplest things are really difficult for people to believe. He was scarred by Dave Bautista, who if I had anybody who I would want scarring me, it would be him, because I loved it. <laughs> Never met Harkonnens before, I have. They're not human, they're brutal. The Harkonnens have a clean shaved face, kind of smooth, and eyebrow blockers, which is quite a complex makeup. The makeup lends so much to the character. I mean, the first time I looked in the mirror when the makeup artist completed the look for the day, I just saw a piter. It was amazing. Uncle, how can we let this happen? How can the Emperor take everything we've built? I knew the Baron would be big, but it really is big. A rock is a rock is. The desert takes the weak. I thought of friends of mine who were based in Sweden. Luve and Eva created the whole suit. So it's a huge, huge undertaking. I had long discussions with Denis about where I wanted to go with it, and that he looked different, that he had a presence that you hadn't seen before. It was difficult because I didn't want the Baron to look like a caricature. I wanted to feel a menace of that massive human being and that weight. Kill them all. Stellan was quite frightening as the Baron, fantastic performance. We worked incredibly hard at making something that we hope people will, will like and value for kind of some artistic merit and contribution. People are hungry to see a fantastic, well-told, interesting story. And I hope that they see something they didn't expect to see. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. You miss my mother in her own home. Come here! The camera goes. And we discover you in the foreground. Oh, he agrees. Remove your hand from the box, and you die. What's in the box? Pain. Oh, yes. I have a Okay. Yeah, things and his friends. The meuf, it's not my It's good. 4% sword, 5% sword, 6%. We could have been here actually all day. Yeah, I know. So thank goodness we finally understood each other. Do not brush against the bush lest you leave a thread to show the way. Where we go, no one must follow. Because he is there.